review respiratory protection in SCBA. In this program, we're going to review the respiratory protection program used in the Alpha Fire Company. We're going to review the Scott SCBA that we use, the donning and doffing of SCBA, care and maintenance of SCBA, a brief overview of the Cascade system, and an overview of the RIT pack or rapid intervention team packs that we carry within the Alpha Fire Company. There is a disclaimer. This PowerPoint presentation does not replace the added benefit of reading the respiratory protection chapter of the Engine Pert Student Manual. The quiz is made up of information presented in this lecture along with information in the textbook. Please do not rely on just this lecture or textbook for the, for the needed information to be successful in the PERT program. An ideal H atmosphere is any and all areas that are deemed with an atmosphere that is harmful to your health. These harmful areas could either be oxygen deficient, which could be an area that has less than 20.8% oxygen, oxygen deficient atmospheres, or anything with 19.5% or less of oxygen content. At structure fires or enclosed fires can be considered oxygen deficient. Oxygen is used in oxidation and combustion. Fire is a limiting agent for ambient oxygen. Also, you may have areas that are oxygen deprived. In the center region, oxygen content is 20.8. The textbook may refer to the oxygen content as 20.1. This is going to change throughout the, the country depending on which area you may be operating in. Just remember that anything 19.5% or less is going to be referred to as an oxygen deficient atmosphere. At 17%, you may experience mus muscular impairment. At 12%, a headache, dizziness, or loss of judgment. At 9%, nausea or vomiting, unconscious within seconds. At 6% oxygen content, death within four to six minutes. Ideal H atmospheres may involve toxic gases or vapors. One of those toxic gases may be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a chemical asphyxiant. Carbon dioxide is an asphyxiant that bonds more aggressively to the hemoglobins in your blood than oxygen. This, presents, this prevents the delivery of oxygen to the organs and the cells. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an asphyxiant that will exclude oxygen from and other gases from ambient air, resulting in an oxygen deficient atmosphere. Hydrogen cyanide, again, is a chemical asphyxiant. Hydrogen cyanide prevents cell respiration. Many of fuels you know, contained in a fire, which may be plastics, um, hydrocarbons, or other man-made materials, may also include phosgene gas, hydrogen chloride, and many others. Any of these gases present within a fire scene may cause acute and chronic illnesses, these acute and chronic illnesses may include nausea or dizziness, fatigue, burns, cardiac or respiratory arrest, or as an acute or as a sorry as a chronic illness may involve cancer. We're now going to re review four main components of the SCBA. These four main components are the cylinder, the regulator, the backpack assembly, and the face piece. For the SCBA used in the Alpha Fire Company, are referred to as an open circuit SCBA. Open circuit means the exhaust air goes to the outside atmosphere from the SCBA breathing system. This positive pressure open circuit SCBA, the positive pressure part of this, the system is equipped with a positive pressure demand, demand valve system. The face piece always has air flowing into it, whether you're breathing or not. The free flowing air is above atmospheric pressure to maintain a positive pressure in the face piece in case of leaks to the face piece or it constant, provides constant air in the case of a down firefighter in respiratory arrest. The demand valve portion is what operates every time the user breathes. This demand valve allows a greater flow of air into the face piece to, to meet the man, demands of breathing. You need to understand that the SCBA weighs approximately 25 pounds, so it is an added weight 
um, that the firefighter is going to need to overcome during regular fire ground operations. For the SCBA cylinder, you need to understand that there are two general types of cylinders. It could either be aluminum or carbon fiber. The ones used in the Alpha Fire Company are carbon fiber design. They are filled to 5,500 or 5,500 PSI and they are rated for a 30 minute working time. Even though they are rated at a 30 minute working time, you may average 10 to 15 minutes of actual working time due to the added workload or your movements um, during your fire ground operations. These cylinders are filled with certified breathing air, which is the same mixture of gases found in the atmosphere. The empty weight of a cylinder is roughly 7 pounds, and the full weight is generally 10 pounds. Even though there is a 3 pound difference between the two, you may be able to feel whether a cylinder is full or not. The best way to determine whether a cylinder is full is looking at the pressure gauge located at the bottom of the cylinder, near the valve. For an SCBA inspection, and when we look at the cylinder, you want to look for cracks, tears, or breaks. Again, the outer shell is a carbon fiber wrap. Make sure the clear epoxy coat is intact and the carbon fiber is not exposed. You want to check the neck and the threads to ensure there is no physical damage to the threads or the neck of the valve assembly. Check the gauge and the valve. Make sure the gauge is not damaged or cracked. The cylinder pressure should be 5,000 PSI or greater. If not, it should be filled or taken out of service until a qualified member is able to fill the cylinder. You also want to check the hydrostatic test date. The cylinder should be tested every five years or the cylinder date should be within the five years. If you look at the picture on the screen, it is highlighted that this cylinder was manufactured in 12 of 18 or December of 2018. This cylinder would again be tested five years from that date or at, um, by December of 2023. This cylinder will be then be tested every five years after that date. Cylinders have a maximum life of 15 years from the manufactured date. After 15 years, the cylinder is taken out of service and destroyed. Moving on, the next part is the regulator. The picture you'll see in the upper right corner is the low pressure mass mounted regulator. The other regulator within the system is the high pressure regulator. That's the bottom picture. The mass mounted regulator will be attached to the SCBA face piece. The high pressure regulator will be attached to the SCBA back frame. The low pressure mass mounted regulator, during its inspection, you want to look for breaks or for cracks. You want to check the hoses for any issues. You want to check the Teflon gasket to ensure it's still in place. And you want to make sure that the purge valve is free to operate in a full 180 degree turn. You also see that there is a heads up display. The heads up display gives you color indications using both red, yellow, and green. This is an indication of how much air is remaining in the system. The end of service time indicator, or the EOSTI, the end of service time indicator indicates at the point whenever there is a third of the cylinder volume has been consumed, or a third of the cylinder volume remains within the cylinder. Where two thirds has been used, a third remains within the cylinder. Here's a photo of the high pressure regulator. Or in, during the inspection, the high pressure regulator is going to be inspected for breaks or for cracks. We also want to check any of the hoses and fittings connections to the high pressure regulator. The backpack assembly. This includes both the shoulder straps, the waist strap, the high pressure regulator, the mass mounted regulator, and the hoses. Each of these components are attached to the backpack assembly. We want to investigate or check the backpack assembly, both the straps for tears, breaks, or heat damage, extreme wear and tear, which may be large rips, excessive fraying, excessive decoloration or heat exposure, holes burned through the straps, 
and ensure that the attachments are in working order. Make sure that the waist buckle works, that the shoulder strap adjustments are in a working order. At the conclusion of the inspection, ensure that all straps are extended fully. The backpack assembly also includes the universal air connection or a RIT connection. This picture shows both the RIT connection with the dust cover on and with the dust cover removed. The emergency breathing support system or the EBSS is located on the right side of the waist strap. This is only used in emergency operations. This is a connection to either the RIT pack, that is a standalone system, or you can use this to connect multiple SCBA together during emergency operations. The pass device is a, is a indication or a, as an indication of your movement, okay, or a personal alerting system. If the firefighter stops moving for an extended period of time, the pass alarm will activate. Again, as an indication that the firefighter is down. During inspection of the SCBA system, we want to verify that the pressure gauge on the cylinder matches the pressure gauge on the chest mounted. They are within 100 PSI of each other. The pass alarm has two main components, the control module, which you will see in front of you. It's located on the right chest strap, houses the air supply gauge. This can be used to shut off the electric system to the SCBA. And you can shut the system off whenever the cylinder is closed and there is no air in the system. The yellow button on the control module is used to reset the pass alarm and shuts off the electric system. The red button on the control module activates the pass alarm and turns on the electric system if the cylinder is closed and no air is in within the system. There are two lights located on the control module. The red light is active when the system is in alarm. The green light indicates normal operation. During normal operation, the SCBA pass alarm will not activate. The motion sensor or an audible system will activate if the SCBA is motionless for 20 seconds. 12 seconds after the pre-alert, the system will go into full alarm with no movement. Once this pass alarm is in full alarm, the system cannot be reset by moving the SCBA. It can only be reset or turned off using the yellow button with a du double click of the yellow button. The SCBA face piece, during inspection, you want to check for breaks, tears, or heat damage, spidering or deglazing of the face piece, burns or melting of the face piece, discoloration preventing visibility through the face piece, scratches, gouging in the face piece that may weaken it or limit visibility. You want to check the straps and hair net for damage and be sure the straps are relaxed. No tears, rips, or fraying should be present. All straps should be extended and not twisted. Straps are not stretched to the point of losing their elasticity. Next you want to check the nose cuff for any damage. Ensure the nose cup is secure, no debris, no debris or damage is found in the nose cup, all valves are in place. Check all screws for damage, check, check the screws are in place, and securing the netting straps to the face piece. Ensure that the face piece is clean. For donning the SCBA, there are two methods, over the head method and the coat method. Both of these methods are done for SCBA not in the seat of the apparatus or not attached to a seat on the apparatus. When using the SCBA out of the seat on the apparatus, these steps will, will be followed for donning the backpack assembly. The face piece needs to be taken with the SCBA and the face piece should not be worn on the apparatus. These methods are covered, are, will cover two um, preferred methods of donning an SCBA and will be used during your hands-on training. For the first method, will be over, well, first method is over the head. The firefighter places the breathing apparatus in front of themselves with the top of the cylinder facing them. The SCBA is upside down 
the top of the cylinder facing the firefighter. The breathing apparatus is placed on the back of the firefighter while picking up the back frame and placing it over their head. When placing the SCBA over their head and their shoulder straps will fall over the arms and in place whenever the SCBA slides down the back. Leaning forward, the firefighter now tightens the shoulder straps all at the same time. The firefighter then grasps the buckles of the waist strap, connects the waist strap, and then snugs the straps tight. You want to adjust the waist strap so it is securely um, affixed. Most comfortable positioning may involve um, loosening the shoulder straps just slightly and transitioning most of the weight of the SCBA onto your hips. When donning the face piece, hold the head harness out of the way with one hand while placing the face piece on the face with the other. Place the chin in the base of the face piece. Pull from the bottom of the head harness to pull it over the head. So you'll see the, the firefighters holding on to the face piece with their right hand and they have a hold of the head strap with their left hand and they're going to work the head net or the head straps over the back of their head. Next you want to pull the head harness over the head and ensure the straps are laying flat against the head with no twist. You can run your hand over top of the head harness down across the back of your head to verify that these straps are not twisted. Next you will tighten the straps, pulling the two lower straps towards the rear of the head or to the rear towards your ears. Next the firefighter wants to reach back and turn the cylinder valve to the on position. Turning the cylinder valve to the left will activate the system. Turning the cylinder valve to the right will close the system. The firefighter wants to ensure that the cylinder valve is open fully or 100%. Next, the firefighter is going to connect the mass mounted regulator to the face piece. You want to place the red purge valve in the up position and then turn the mass mounted regulator counterclockwise until it locks in. You want to ensure that you hold your breath while attaching the mass mounted regulator once it's connected. Take a breath to engage the main line once the mass mounted regulator is in place. This will prevent the mass mounted regulator from pushing out of the face piece if it is not seated and secure when the main line engages. This firefighter is now in full PPE wearing SCBA hood, helmet, and gloves. You want to ensure that your helmet chin strap is secured at all times. You want to ensure that your waist strap is secure at all times. For no reason should a fireman be walking or operating on the fire ground with a loose or disconnected waist strap. Donning SCBA with the coat method. A firefighter places the breathing apparatus in front of themselves grasping the shoulder strap that will go over their shoulder. The breathing apparatus is placed on the back of the firefighter as they don the other shoulder strap. The SCBA can be slung around the back as illustrated or the arms can be crossed holding both shoulder straps when placing the SCBA on the back. While doing this, the straps can slide over the arms. For doffing the SCBA, shut off the air and bleed the pack. Turn off the cylinder, open the purge valve and leave it open until the system is completely shut down. Turn off the pass alarm. Double click the yellow button on the pass alarm. The pass system will chirp until all air is out of the system. A positive alert will occur and the lights will shut off when the system is completely shut down. Once the system is completely shut down, close the purge valve. Doffing the SCBA or the back frame itself, loosen and or disconnect all straps. Slide the, the back frame off of your back and then return the pack to service. 
return the SCBA to service. After each use of the SCBA, the SCBA should be cleaned, checked, and returned to proper service. When cleaning the face piece, use only an improved face piece cleaner. A face piece that is contaminated by chemicals should be taken out of service. Face pieces that are extremely dirty should be placed on a out of ser placed out of service and cleaned in the cleaning machine in the air room. Clean and inspect the cylinder. Clean with a mild detergent and water. Check for any damage. Fill and connect the cylinder to the high pressure line. Cylinders will be filled by members who are qualified to use the cascade system. Clean and check the mass mounting regulator. Clean and dry the mass mounting regulator with soap and water or approved cleaners. The exhalation valve of the mass mounting regulator, always a concern for cross contamination, especially during seasons of high cold flu or other transmissional illnesses. Check the gasket on the mass mounting regulator for any damage. It has become a common practice in the Alpha Fire Company that the mass mounted regulator is disconnected from the SCBA back frame and placed in the drying cabinet to ensure that the um, mass mounted regulator is completely dry before being placed back in service. Check the operation of the pass device. At a minimum, press the reset button and check for the green light to flash. The pass may be both manually activated or test by using SCBA pressure. Return the mass mount regular to its home position on the waist strap. Relax all straps and secure, ensure that straps are not tangled and straps are extended. Place the SCBA and face piece back on the rig it was taken from or back in the air room on the rack. If any problems are found, report the findings to an officer or the quartermaster. For changing the cylinder on the SCBA from the new S Scott X3 Pro, they use a snap change style air fitting to connect the high pressure regulator to the cylinder valve. You want to release the cylinder straps on the backpack assembly. To remove the cylinder, Disconnect the cylinder from the high pressure regulator, pulling the two rings on the high pressure valve away from each other, located at the valve assembly. You see there are two arrows here, you want to pull both the rings in opposite directions. The snap connection will discharge from the high pressure regulator when the rings are pulled. You will hear a click sound. The cylinder can then be removed from guiding the cylinder out of the cylinder straps towards the bottom of the back frame assembly. To replace the cylinder, slide the cylinder in place from the bottom to the top up underneath the strap. Once the cylinder is situated um, and lined up over top of the high pressure regulator, we want to push down on the, the valve, snapping it into position. We should hear a snap sound. Once the cylinder is snapped into location or securely placed in its um, proper position, then we want to sec secure the cylinder strap located on the back frame. The cylinder has a traditional style thread connection to be filled off the cascade system or a compressor system. To be able to use the cascade or compressor system, members must review the new fill station and be checked off by either the Assistant Chief of Fleet Services or the Equipment Technician. There are emergency procedures to use during the operation of SCBA. If there is an interruption in the airflow, the first thing the firefighter wants to do is open the purge valve to allow a free flow of air. You want to ensure that the cylinder valve did not become shut for some reason or was not turned off. If the cylinder did shut off, there is a problem with the valve assembly and the air pack should be switched. Follow the route of air from the regulator to the cylinder, checking for obstructions, damages, or leaks. You want to notify your supervisor, your officer, command, and then exit this area immediately. Depending on the situation, the crew may be split 
to escort the firefighter with the SCBA issue from the hazardous environment. This may be due to become be, or located deep within the structure or other hazardous areas, or there may be a limited means of egress that slows evacuation. If there is a free flow of air from the mass mounted regulator into the face piece, first check the purge valve to ensure it is closed. If the air continues to flow into the face piece, even with a closed purge valve, gate the cylinder valve to an appropriate airflow. You then want to notify your supervisor or your officer and exit to a safe area immediately. If the Viber Alert activates above a third of cylinder pressure, again this is an indication there is a problem with the system. This could be an internal pressure reducer failure of the high pressure regulator block. You want to notify your supervisor or your officer and then exit to a safe area immediately. If unable to exit to an area immediately due to an SCBA issue, there are a few techniques that may be used. Controlled breathing is whenever you inhale through the nose, exhale through your mouth, and a controlled breathing rate. Skip breathing is when you take a breath and hold it, take another breath, and then exhale, exhale and repeat. Mayday is a term we use whenever a firefighter is in distress or potential distress and they also give a lunar report. A lunar report is a, is a way of notifying command or the rescue crew of where you're located. There are a few other important pieces of information that come from a lunar report. Location, your unit name, your name, the air, remaining air supply or air remaining, and resources needed to get you out. If you have a depletion of air supply with no resupply available, call a Mayday, give them the lunar report, and activate your pass alarm. You want to stay low, establish filter breathing once the SCBA air supply has been exhausted. Filter breathing will occur whenever the mass mounted regulator remains attached to your face piece. You want to break the seal between the face piece and your face and you're going to filter breathe through your, your hood using it as a filter. You want to attempt exit from the hazardous area. If resupply of air is available, you still want to call Mayday and activate your pass alarm. Stay as low as possible and establish an air supply with the external air supply either through the body breather or through transfilling with the high pressure into the high pressure regulator. So here's a picture of the RIT pack carried on the apparatus in the Alpha Fire Company. The benefits of, of a RIT pack is an external emergency air supply. This emergency air supply includes an SCBA cylinder, a supply hose with a universal air connection, with a female connection on that, that would be on the high pressure side. Also includes a hose with the body breathing system. This will have both male and female connections. The RIT pack also includes a face piece and a regulator. The universal air connection, again, uses a, is set up for a transfill, which connects on the high pressure side, and it will transfill or equalize the pressure between the cylinder in the RIT pack and the cylinder on the firefighter's back. The emergency breathing supply support system, or the emergency breathing support system, um, also referred to as EBSS, who operates on the low pressure side uses a Y connection which has both a male and a female connection. This connection can be connected into the EBSS of the, the down firefighters SCBA. If for some reason there is an issue with the down firefighters SCBA then their mass mounted regulator can be attached to the EBSS. If for some reason there is an issue with the firefighters mass mounted regulator and their face piece um, during the worst situations, the, the face piece can be removed and replaced with the face piece that's in the RIT pack. And then also the additional regulator can be used that's supplied within the RIT pack. This is a connection or this is a photo of the EBSS system with the female connection connected to 
the new regulator and face piece for the down firefighter. Um, in creating a continuous air supply or the firefighter will now be breathing off of the components of the RIT pack. This is a completion of the lecture for the SCBA respiratory protection section of the engine part program. Please complete the quiz located in the description section of the YouTube video. If you have any questions, please ask those to the engine officers or if you have other questions or if they're not available, um, stop by and ask the Assistant Chief of Training. Thank you.